Hello readers, welcome back to Reads with Rune B with me, Rune B. Today we are continuing on with Gumshoes, The Case of Madison's Father by Russell Nolte. We are on chapter 12, Otis's House. <laughs> the first bell rang, a bleary-eyed Stuart disjointedly ambled down the hallway. He held out his arm to open the door to his classroom, but Madison grabbed hold of his shoulder and spun him around. Whoa, cowboy, she said. You don't don't think you want to go there. Stuart realized that he had tried to o that the door he had tried to open was not in his classroom. In fact, it was the girl's bathroom, the site of his greatest humiliation. One one time may be forgivable, but twice you're a pervert, said Madison. Stuart let out a huge yawn as he cracked his back. Yeah, that would have been embarrassing. So what's got you so tired? Madison asked. The tapes, Stuart said. I listened to them twice last night, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. I've officially taken pharmaceutical manufacturing off my list of future career opportunities. Timothy exited the boys' bathroom just in time to hear Stuart's last comment. How could it have ever been on your list of potential careers? You must be smart to attempt such a profession. Stuart stretched his, arms, uh, stretched his arms over his head to regain his energy. Well, let me just say I couldn't be happier that it's happier not to be a genius, then. Madison turned to Timothy. And where were you while your friend almost died of boredom? Shouldn't you have been listening to? I was convincing my father that a very important science exhibition at the Kilmerhof Museum was more valuable was a more valuable use of my time than school, said, Timothy said. And he bought that, Madison said. Bought it. He called in sick today so he could go and see it for himself. It's actually quite fantastic. I highly recommend it. I've been three times already. <laughs> Stuart laughed, which sent blood rushing back into his brain. His cognitive function returned to normal. He noticed that he then noticed that Madison cradled an enormous trifold poster under her right arm. How did I miss that thing? said Stuart. It's huge. What is it? Madison stepped in front of Stuart and Timothy and unfurled the poster. Along the top the head read the headline Monthly Trends in News, but the letters of the headline were magazine clippings, all cut out individually and pasted together, like a ransom note. The same theme was instituted, was instituted throughout the poster on every subheading and important conclusion. Remember that I said my journalism teacher makes us put together collages, which talk about the trends in news? Well, it's due today. Stuart and Timothy perused the poster and eventually landed on the center image, a picture of Madison's father with the headline, Lawyer Lost. They looked up at Madison, who grinned through her sorrow. I couldn't leave it out if, uh, if I wanted an A. The second bell rang, and Madison closed her poster. I have to drop this off. Can we get together and listen to the recording? And, and Can we get together later and listen to those recordings? Sure. Bring some caffeine, because it's so boring, said Stuart. Madison chuckled. You're so funny. I'll meet you after school, and we'll go over those, and we'll go over to the treehouse together, okay? Stuart grinned like an idiot. Sure. Yeah. See you after school. Stuart and Madison sat on the couch at Gumshoe headquarters. They listened over a set of speakers to Otis Howard talk about his day to friends, type on his computer, dictate notes to his subordinates. Jenny, take this down. We need to decrease the zinc competent to... We need to decrease the zinc component to one... Th 1.3 milligrams per thousand. That should increase cost efficiency by 4% across the board. Stuart rolled his eyes and slouched in his chair. Nine hours straight of listening to this. There's nothing here except the dullest man, except the dullest man in history. <laughs> but can we fast forward through it? No, because you never know what when he might say something relevant. This blows chunks. 
Madison leaning closely, trying to listen to s despite Stuart's complaints. Shh, I can't hear. Fine, I've had enough. I need a break. I'm going to see what Timothy's doing. Stuart walked over to Timothy's workstation and watched him dust the pencil with powder, with powder under an ultraviolet light. Find anything? Timothy picked up the pencil and used adhesive tape to pull off a partial fingerprint. Outside of the fact that this man's mouth is full of disgusting bacteria, nothing substantial. You could try and get something more disgust. Could you try and get something more disgusting next time, like a stool sample? I'll try, buddy," said Stuart. "Anything for you." Timothy sighed. "I've run." three different far partial fingerprints pulled from this pencil against the police database and those I pulled from the crime scene and not found a single point of commonality. Unfortunately, outside contaminants severely compromised the integrity of these prints. Perhaps if he stole his keyboard, it would have proven an easier comparison. How am I going to steal a keyboard without being noticed? I don't know. How do you do any of the things you do? Now then, please. This is the last fingerprint on the pencil. I need complete silence. Really? Aren't you just running the data aren't you just running the data through a through a computer? Timothy placed the adhesive tape onto his scanner and digitized the print into his computer. Yes, but you're quite annoying and not very intelligent, so I was hoping that might shut you up. Madison bolted out of her chairs screaming guys over here now timothy and Stuart rushed over to madison i switched the tape back up to the live feed to see if anything more exciting was going on and i heard this madison cranked cranked up the volume yeah yeah the plan is going perfectly no i have everything in my basement nope doesn't suspect a thing yes i'm going to set up everything up today after tonight everything will be cleaned up you know, you'd think the cleaning staff would do a better job watering this plant. Jenny, bring me a bottle of water. Stuart's eyes bugged out of his head. Oh no, this isn't good. They heard Jenny respond respond to Otis. Here you go, sir. Stuart's eyes clenched shut. This definitely isn't going to be good. Water was poured into the plant, which followed a hissing sound and then silence. Crap! Madison turned up the volume, but no sound emitted. What happened? What? What happened? I think it's obvious. Stuart planted the bug in the wrong place. What's the number one rule, Stuart? Not anywhere it can get wet. I'm sorry. I panicked. I was in a hurry. The plant wasn't even dying. It was fine. And now we're in the dark again, said Timothy. We just wasted a whole day of work. Not to mention the monetary... Wait, said Madison. You mean we lost all communication? But that was it. We were just about to get a confession on tape. I don't know what you want us to do, said Stuart, unless you plan to break into his basement and find out what he's talking about. We're screwed. A devious smile crept across Madison's face. That's exactly what I plan on doing. You can't be serious, Timothy said. Madison nodded. nodded. No, said Stuart. We're not doing it. It's too dangerous. Madison looked at him. Doe-eyed. It's my father. Besides, I could just go without you. All right, we'll go, said Stuart. But the moment I sniff danger, we're out of there, deal? She pumped her fist. Yes! Madison pulled Stuart toward the door, and he yelled at Timothy. Figure out where he lives and get back to me. Timothy plopped down at his computer. Clean that blind, sir. Sweep that rug, sir. When did I become his employee instead of his partner? Oh, look, I've already found the address. Now I guess I'll just sit here and wait while they have all the fun. <laughs> Timothy snatched up his walkie-talkie. Stuart, I have the address. Otis Howard's house belied his, sta his status in life. A two-story Victorian fixer-upper. The trusses hung in disrepair over a poorly attended garden. The windows swung free of their hinges, and the door desperately needed replacement. Stuart and Madison hid their bikes in the brush next to Otis Howard's home. They slunk down to consider their next move. Stuart noticed a slightly Stuart noticed a small utility window. 
in the lower left corner of the house, hidden by a lifeless, lifeless bush. I thought this place would be nicer, given where he works, said Stuart. It would be lucky to st survive a strong sneeze. Is that really all you can think about at a time like this, said Madison. My dad's in there. Right, and I think I have a plan on how to get inside. He ran to a utility... He ran to a utility window leading into the basement and pushed aside the bush. Madison followed closely behind. Hold this, he said, and he pushed hard on the window, grunting with all of, the, with all of his might. These old utility windows are usually painted shut and forgotten, but if you push hard enough, they'll snap open. How do you know that? Madison said. I saw it on TV, said Stuart. And sure enough, with one more shove, the window snapped and flipped up. Stuart's displaced force sent him tumbling through the tiny window into the basement. Madison screamed, Are you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Do you see anything? No, it's dark down here. All I can see is the light from the window. Swing in your legs and I'll help you down. Madison swung her legs through the tiny window. I'm about to search through a killer's basement. I must be an idiot, Stuart said. Stuart, I think this is a bad idea. Stuart yanked hard, and Madison fell into the house. Madison steadied, steadied herself against an old-fashioned washer while she adjusted to the darkness. It stinks down here, like rotten eggs. Can you turn on a light? Stuart ran his fingers along the wall until he felt a switch. He flicked it up and down several times to no, avail, to no avail. Must not be working. No problem. As if being in a basement in a possible kidnapper's house isn't freaky enough without having to investigate in complete dark, in complete darkness. Dad! Dad! Are you down here? Dad! Stuart moved to the center of the basement. His face brushed against something stringy like a cobweb. Ew! Ew! Spiders! Madison deftly avoided Stuart's chaotic flailing arms and reached out and felt not cobweb, but string. She yanked it, and the lights came on. Chicken, please, if it had touched your face, you would have freaked too. Uh-huh. Exposing plumbing and concrete floors added yet another dimension of imperfection to a home already in disrepair, and all manners of tools, clothing, non-perishable foods, useless trinkets were strewn across the floor. Wood, wood beams full of dry rot ran, ran along the length of the basement and looked like they could collapse at any, at any moment. But Stuart concentrated on one object laying in the corner. He tapped Madison's shoulder, too scared to speak. What is it, the bogeyman? Madison turned and came face to face with a huge black black bag the size of a full grown man laying across the floor. It was zippered shut and bursting at the seam. Along with the top along the top it read Coroner in big stencil letters. Oh no Madison squeaked. Madison and Stuart inched closer to the bag, full of trepidation. They knelt down on opposite sides of it. I don't think I can do this, Madison said. We don't have to. Yes, we do if we want the police to come. We have to know. Otherwise, it'll be gone by tomorrow. Stuart slowly moved his hands toward the zipper. As his fingers grabbed onto the zip, he heard a creak of the front door open. Stuart grabbed his walkie-talkie. Timothy, has Otis moved? His walkie-talkie crackled. No, his car's still in the parking lot. Why do you ask? The front door just opened. Someone's in the house. Then I suggest you hide. Footsteps creaked along the floorboards above, with each dry, rotted beam buckled. With each step, the dry, rotted beams buckled. The steps moved closer and closer to, to the doorway, and unfinished, unfinished wooden stairs that led up to them. Countless bags stuffed tightly into an open storage space under the stairs formed the perfect hiding spot. Quick, under the stairs! 
Madison and Stuart and Madison crammed themselves in between a pile of old workout equipment and three garbage bags full of smelly old shoes. As they burrowed their way into the years of forgotten memories, the footsteps descended, descended the stairs. Creak, thump, creak, thump, creak, thump. Nestled safely behind a lifetime of junk, Madison created a hole and peered out. She watched Otis walk into the basement. Did I leave the light on again? Did I leave the dang light on again? I'd lose my mind if it wasn't attached. I just walked over toward the body bag. My back's going to give out if I have to drag this thing down here again. I'm glad it'll be. I'm glad it'll all be over real soon. Thing, whispered Madison. My dad's not a thing. I'm going to. Stuart pulled Madison back before she could lurch forward and attack. Quiet. This guy's possibly a murderer. Don't you? Possibly, possibly, Madison whispered angrily. What's that bag say to you? We're not going to get anywhere if we're dead, too. Madison folded her arms in defeat and peered out of the hole. She watched Otis bend down and sling the bag over his shoulder. He grunted as he rose and then turned and walked towards the stairs. I'm going to lose my mind, I swear, one of these days. Changing course, he walked over to to the light and pulled the string. Now in darkness, Stuart and Madison could only listen as Otis descended the stairs. Thump, creak, thump, creak, thump, creak. Otis exited out the back door, slamming it behind him. Madison and Stuart sat in silence with only their labored breathing and the drip of a nearby sink to break the silence. And that was chapter 12. Stay safe. Keep reading and be awesome. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now readers.